இதுல தான் போதும் Good afternoon everyone, I um, hope I am audible to you all. So myself, uh, Nivin, uh, so I am from Panda Key Learning. So we will be having a session on uh, self-driving car and automation uh, using ADAS and ROS here. So okay, so we'll, uh, so in morning session we had, a, uh, so this is a continuation of the morning session that we had. So in morning session, uh, we had two, two resource persons and they explained everything very properly. They uh, explained about, in general, they explained about autonomous driving cars and uh, uh, autom like automation in general. So we'll uh, talk about self-driving cars and automation. And uh, so my area of expertise is mostly robotics and uh, ROS, so robotic operating system and ROS. So, and I can talk about autonomous cars and uh, self-driving cars uh, briefly initially. Then we will go into details of a robotic operating system. And we'll see uh, a practical implementation of robotic operating system uh, by with the SLAM technique. So, uh, <clears throat> so SLAM is a self uh, simultaneous localization and mapping. So using that, we can de design different type of autonomous vehicles, autonomous uh, like robots. So this can be, uh, this, this is like a part of, uh, we can see this as a small part of uh, autonomous car, 
a development. So it is a very simple system compared to a autonomous car, a self-driving robot is a very simple system. But we, uh, but it uses uh, same kind of uh, ideas. So we can use it as a learning point. We can use it as a starting point for learning self-driving cars and automation. So what are, what are the contents that we are going to see here? So in introduction technology, what is it uh, and how does it work, equipment use? So we'll see all these different things here. And uh, so definition, what is, what is an autonomous car, a driverless car or a self-driving car? An autonomous car or cars are known as uncrewed vehicle. So it is an uncrewed vehicle. There is no need to have a driver or driverless or self-driving or a car or robotic car. Vehicle capable capable of fulfilling the main transportation capabilities of a regular car on its own. So it should be able to fulfill the same until and un, until and un, unless it is able to do the same thing a, a, a normal car a, a car that is controlled by a human. Uh, so unless and until it is able to do all those things, it is a, uh, it cannot be considered a fully autonomous car, fully self-driving car. So like a human being uh, can assess based on the current situation. Uh, so we have our uh, vision and uh, we can sense uh, based on sounds and vibrations. So different type of sensations can be used to for our own judgment. So based on that judgment, we will be uh, making each and every decisions while we are driving. So the same thing has to be implemented on a, on a fully uh, automated machine. So that is very complicated process because uh, human human uh, are very uh, uh, human being is a uh, like a very complex being, very complex organism. So that is same thing. Uh, it is not a, uh, so if you say like hundred percent is it implemented, it is not still a regular thing. It is implemented already, but an autonomous car, autonomous vehicle is not a regular thing yet. The vehicle that is uh, then. Uh, then this another point is a vehicle is capable of sensing its environment and navigate navigating without a human input or assistance or help. So vehicle that is able to sense the environment. So what is the surrounding and environment? So uh, in morning Q and a session, we uh, some somebody asked about uh, whether we can able to implement this in villages. So that is actually possible even if there is no uh, like uh, a proper road system. Still, we can implement uh, autonomous. We can uh, have autonomous robots uh, running, autonomous uh, vehicles driving, uh, autonomous vehicles running with, with other type of uh, uh, like in normal cases, we can use the lane detection uh, for finding out whether the uh, you know whether the car is moving in uh, in in proper lane. Uh, in but in case of a in a, in case of a mud road, that is not possible. Uh, so it is a uh, there are no lanes and uh, there are no proper markings. There won't be any signboards. So this all can be. So we can use uh, uh, other technologies to rectify this problem to implement that. So that the environment should be understood first, whether it is a normal road or a highway or a city road, or uh, it is a uh, uh, much more like a rural area so whatever it is it should be able to the vehicle should be able to assess the uh, the environment then when we go into brief history so the autonomous the idea of autonomous vehicle was already existing even in the early uh, even in the early 1900s uh, while the while the industrial revolution was happening it was already being uh, being the idea was already being uh, Drawn and uh, experiments have been conducted on auto automating cars since at least 19 to th uh, 1920s. Promising trials took place in 1950s and work has proceeded since then. The self self sufficient and truly autonomous cars appeared in 19 appeared in 1980s. So in 1980s they actually implemented a real self driving car with the Carnegie Carnegie Mellon University Nav Lab and ALV projects in 19. 84 and Mercedes Benz and uh, and then Bundeswehr University, Bundeswehr University in Munich, Eureka Pro Prometheus project in 1987. So these are the two major uh, developments in uh, 20th century. Uh, so in 1984, uh, this uh, Carnegie Mellon Lab and ALV projects implemented this implemented this uh, autonomous vehicle. And after that, in 1987. 
Meisterus Benz and Bundeswehr University in Germany in Munich. They both uh, combined together to make a, uh, make another uh, uh, project called Eureka Prometheus. So this is a, a another practical. So here we'll be talking. Uh, so from now on, we'll be just talking about uh, Google self-driving car. So that is a more recent development. And there are like so many companies that are uh, implementing self-driving cars these days. And uh, like so much, so much development is happening. And uh, in in European Union, they're trying to standardize the self uh, standardize the self-driving car. Not in not just in European. Uh, European Union that uh, development is mostly happening in research and development is mostly happening in European Union uh, because the major uh, like vehicle manufacturers are from there. So it is majorly happening there, but still the whole world is combined to make uh, standards and uh, uh, standards based on which manufacturers can build uh, autonomous cars. So that development is going on, but we cannot access that data uh, because it is not open. They are still under. Uh, development so we can have like for uh, as an example we can see Google self-driving cars so this was uh, initially implemented in 2008 2009 time time period uh, they started uh, developing this uh, so they have made different different versions of that and uh, this is a more recent one and uh, <clears throat> so uh, so then introduction uh, to Google self-driving car. So Google self-driving car is a project by Google involves developing technology for mainly for electric cars. Software installed in Google's cars are called Google Chauffeur. So the software is called a chauffeur. So, so uh, uh, as we know, chauffeur means uh, a person who drives around uh, people like uh, uh, a driver uh, help. So that is a, uh, so the software is called a chauffeur because the software acts like a driver. Project was formerly led by Sebastian Brown, former director of Stanford Art Artificial Intelligence Laboratory and co-inventor of Google Street View. So Google Street View is a very important uh, factor in case of uh, autonomous vehicle development. Like Google Street View, we all know about Google Street View. You can uh, use that to see any, any area. So that is a, that, that is a view of, a, uh, of any street in Google Maps that we can see by using satellite images. So satellite images are used for seeing a place uh, so we can navigate uh, through streets. So there will be like a 3D like uh, 3D like uh, like uh, videos like uh, you know uh, interface there. We can see like view uh, streets and we can you know navigate through that. So that this this can be used easily used in case of uh, you know, autonomous vehicles. Then technology, the project team has, has, has equipped a number of different type of uh, cars with the self-driving equipment, including Toyota, Audi, TT, Lexus, RX, 450H. And Google has developed uh, their own custom vehicle, which is uh, assembled by Roche Enterprises, uh, uses equipments from Bosch, LG. So Bosch, uh, so th that is the car that we just see here. Here, this is the... This is Google's own car. First, they implemented it in the different type of cars. And then here, then afterwards, they uh, made their own uh, vehicle for that. Then Google's robotic car, cars are about uh, 150K in equipments, including 70,000 just for the LiDAR system. So the, just for the LiDAR system, it costs 70,000. So it's not very cost effective still. So the LiDAR technology that is used in uh, the uh, used in autonomous cars. So the, this is a view of a 3D LiDAR. So the, this output view of a 3D LiDAR. So these are all laser scans here. And you can see here the vehicle. So this is a vehicle and uh, so all the other different uh, things can be seen here like pedestrians, uh, the street, uh, uh, street signs, uh, you know, road signs and uh, different bus stops and other things. So the you can see this is a laser trace here. So this is output. By using this, we can easily uh, it, it, it you know, we can use easily use this for obstacle detection, uh, you know, range finding or identification of objects. So we can use this is one of the system, one of the system that is in, implemented in uh, Google cars, Google's uh, you know self driving cars. So laser allows vehicles to generate a detailed 3D map of its environment. So it can generate a 3D 3D map. 
so it is a 3d map so live 3d map real time 3d map that means any ob uh, objects uh, like humans or animals or any other type of inanimate objects or vehicles can be easily detected using the laser finding technology the car then the car then takes uh, these generated maps and combines them with the high resolution maps of their world so this then this can be uh, combined with a real high definition map from like a satellite view or uh, created from satellites or a google map uh, 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 that can be combined with this real time data to make a high resolution map of the world uh, then what is it it is a first truly driverless electric car prototype built by google to test next uh, stage of uh, five year tech, uh, old self driving car project it looks like a cross uh, between a smart car and a nissan micra with the two seats uh, and room enough for small uh, amount of luggage so this is about just about the car itself in in it it is the first real physical in incarnation of google's vision of what self driving car of the near future could be so it is not uh, it is just an experimental prototyping uh, like experimental uh, project and uh, how does it work powered by an electric motor uh, with the around 100 mile range the car uses com co combination of sensors and software to create it create uh, lock uh, software to locate itself and real world combined with the highly accurate digital maps a gps is used just like a, the satellite navigation system in most cars to get a rough location of the car so that is very important in identifying the environment whether it is a city or a highway or a rural location so the, the gps location can be used for that for that information to get that information the immediate identification of the gen, uh, like general environment then at which point the rad, radar and laser laser like lidar uh, different type of lidar system like 3d 2d lidar systems and cameras cameras like different type of cameras like stereo cameras or 3d cameras and uh, 2d cameras take over to monitor the world around the car so that uh, gps pro gps provides a general like location this is the area uh, so uh, like particular point uh, then using real time sensors like radar systems and uh, lidar system then different type of cameras the see the 360 view of the entire environment the view not in the sense of like a normal view uh, like vision it's different it, the, because the output from each of these sensors are different from uh, uh, the radar sensor will be different from laser mapping laser mapping will be different from camera uh, 3d or 2d camera output so the 360 view 360 uh, environment is mapped uh, fully mapped using these all these uh, three technologies then uh, technology the software can be uh, can recognize objects so it has a 3d and 2d camera so, so the using that software can recognize objects people cars road marking signs traffic lights obeying obeying the rules of the road allowing for multiple unpredictable hazards including cyclists it can even detect road works and safety navigate around them so this is all very important uh, we have to add all these like for a, you know, a normal human being, uh, a person who's, who have enough experience, who is, a, an, an, who is an adult, can easily uh, analyze and uh, come to con conclusion based on what, what they are seeing. So whether there is a uh, road work going on. So if there is road work going on, then there will be signboards that uh, indicate that you have to go slow or uh, working uh, road, you know. Uh, workers I heard so like that that type of signs can be read by a person and that person can uh, change their way of driving according to that so same should be possible for a autonomous vehicle without any human input it should be able to uh, capture the capture whatever situation that is happening and uh, in real time it should be able to predict what type of uh, you know what type of actions it need to take so there are like when it comes to uh, a, the simple robot implementation that we are going to see in that robot Im implementation we are simply just controlling the uh, speed speed of each dc motor so by controlling the speed and direction of each uh, dc motor we can easily control by using pid type of uh, control uh, like pid control by we can easily accurately control the speed and make both motors rotate at the same speed or a different speed if needed.
so uh, that is a very simple implementation so there is only one single part in an autonomous car like for example the speed of each wheel uh, the engine how fast the engine the rpm all that all that is a single part of a or actual autonomous car you know autonomous car that speed is controlled each uh, wheel speed is controlled and uh, steering is controlled uh, to wheel speed is controlled and the steering is controlled to navigate easily and then there are other so many other factors uh, that need to be done like uh, traffic indications different type of indication like blinkers and uh, uh, horn and all these things have to be implemented other than the actual simple navigation itself so then equipments use lidar system video cameras radar uh, sensors ultrasonic sensors sensors central uh, then a central computer to process all the data so that is the idea so if you take a autonomous vehicle a self driving car it has all these input streams like from lidar it is getting all the laser scans and the 3d mapping of the area then video camera from 3d cameras and 2d cameras it is getting all this information and then in the inside the car it is monitoring the people inside the car if there is any people inside then present then it's monitoring using cameras it's monitoring the people inside the car then radar systems is used for ranging uh, any kind of incoming uh, objects like vehicles uh, coming opposite you or a vehicle behind you or vehicle vehicle in front of you or a, or people and other objects all these can be mapped and uh, the uh, size of the object can be easily calculated using uh, radar system so radar system is is more uh, so the radar and lidar system is more real time in that case because it it can detect obstacles and it can uh, you know in, intimate the central system so then other then other small sensors like small ultra you know range finding sensors ultrasonic or by using laser uh, it is it uses then other type of sensors for uh, for uh, accurately uh, you know getting the speed and uh, different type of other environmental uh, things and uh, other parameters like uh, engine temperature engine temperature all these things can be access the fuel gauge everything is uh, combined into a single stream so all these input from uh, uh, the all these input from all these different sensors are combined into a single stream to make the aut autonomous car so the like radar lidar camera 3d camera everything is combined to and gps information everything is combined to make a single decision whether uh, how much speed the car should be moving uh, whether it should be taking turns and uh, whether, uh, whether it should be stopping or slowing down so all these all it need to make a single decision at a time based on all these input values so lidar if you take lidar lidar sensor means uh, uh, so lidar sensor is designed for obstacle detection and navigation of autonomous ground vehicles so it is used to for mainly used for for obstacle detection and navigation of uh, ground vehicles then video cameras different types of cameras are installed at various locations so there is like uh, so like i said there is a there are there are cameras that uh, monitor people inside and there are 3d cameras and 2d cameras that are outside uh, pointed to to the outside to recognize different things like uh, humans or uh, uh, objects or road signs or signals so all these are uh, can be done through cameras then radar sensor so the radar is in, implemented here in this position on the rear of the vehicle the radar sensor are the front and back side of the car so front and back side of the car there we can find the radar sensors so then ultrasonic sensors are used here uh, to measure the position of object very, very close to the vehicle such as other vehicles when parking so in parking space when the vehicles are too close ultrasonic sensor can be used for uh, measuring the distance between the or in a traffic in a traffic uh, stop uh, where, where the, when there is a red light and if it's a crowded uh, lane then uh, then using ultrasonic sensors the uh, vehicle can detect any the autonomous the self driving vehicle can detect any other vehicles on its side by using this ultrasonic sensor then central computer information from all these sensors are 
is analyzed by a central computer that manipulates uh, the uh, steering, acceleration and brake. So then uh, key factors about the vehicle, sensors and hardware components that have been custom built for the self-driving car. So all these things are custom built for the car itself. Uh, so all the equipments are proprietary and custom built. Uh, new technologies uh, to protect pedestrians including flexible white screen and front uh, made for form like materials. So to uh, so like form like so the uh, to protect pedestrians uh, so the flexible white screen front made of form like material and then electric batteries are uh, here. So this is a fully electric car. Electric batteries are there. Then speed ca uh, capped at 25 miles per hour. Then primary and primary backup system for steering and brake up, braking and software designed to drive from point to uh, point uh, A to point B without requiring any human intervention in any human intervention. Then inside seats for two passengers and space for their belonging, a button to start or pull over, an emergency stop button, a screen showing the route. So these are all the things that are available in the car. Then uh, when we have when we see the uh, more closely look into the sensors. So the on top you can see a laser sensor scan 360 degree around the vehicle for objects. So that is a light uh, lidar sensor that uses uh, uses laser for or, uh, for detecting any objects around around the vehicle in 360 degree around the vehicle. And then radar measures the speed of vehicle uh, ahead. Uh, so it is used for, uh, for ranging the vehicle in front of uh, the car and also for detecting the speed. An orientation sensor uh, tracks the car's motion and balance. So there are orientation sensor, IME sensors are used to for uh, see to see if the car is on, uh, on a level field, on a level uh, road, or is it little slanting or, uh, or it is or if the road is very bumpy so all these can be uh, detected using an orientation sensor then uh, then you can see here a uh, wheel hub sensor detect the number of rotations to help determine the car's location so the location is location can be even uh, the location can be easily found found out using the uh, wheel like the we can use gps uh, to locate the car and we can see like by using the wheel hub sensor we can easily see how much distance the car traveled in real time and how much uh, in you know speed it is going on all these can be calculated using this here then a processor uh, reads the data and regulates vehicle behavior the processor that reads the data and regulates the vehicle behavior advantage manage traffic managing traffic flow relieving vehicles avoid accidents increase roadway capacity determine the current uh, location and in recent development in google cars so in 2021 waymo uh, so waymo this is uh, the waymo system that was implemented by uh, by google and uh, the, it was it has it has the uh, the chauffeur uh, for the chauffeur software that is uh, in uh, implemented Waymo expanded testing of Waymo. Uh, so this is a recent development. So in 2021, Waymo expanded the testing of Waymo uh, 1 to San Francisco. In February 2021, the company started limited rider testing in San Francisco with the Waymo employee volunteers. So with the employee volunteers, they started in 2021, they started limited trials in San Francisco. So in August 2021, commercial Waymo 1 test service started in city, beginning with the trusted test, uh, tester rollout. So still in, in 2021, it was a more advanced testing stage was going on. First with the, the employees. Second, they have uh, made a commercial version and uh, they be beginning with the trusted tester rollout. So that means uh, only like certain people, like uh, certain people selected from the uh, from the public are, uh, are uh, used for this te testing. In, in March 2022, Waymo said that they will begin offering rides in San Francisco without a driver. The driverless rides will be available only for Waymo staff to start. So right now they are uh, they have implemented that, uh, like taxi service. Uh, they are using the uh, uh, you know using self-driving cars like that. So that is very. Uh, 
like encouraging sign because we can implement that type of taxi systems uh, in by using autonomous cars. So in next slide we can see one of those companies. So Uber. So Uber is a we all know about Uber. Uber is a uh, multinational corporation that uh, mainly focuses on transportation. Uh, so it use uh, so it is mainly focusing on taxi like a uh, car uh, based four wheeler based transportation. So they are uh, uh, so. So this is a very, this system, the autonomous uh, self-driving car system is a technology is very useful for a company like Uber. So they can reduce their uh, like uh, employee strength uh, by adding autonomous vehicles to their, uh, their force. So Uber autonomous vehicle prototype testing in San, San Francisco. So this, this is a very recent development. They are making their own, uh, uh, like uh, their so they not exactly a technology company like a manufacturer they are not a manufacturer so they depend on other companies to make their own version of autonomous car so this is a very recent development so in that case we don't need a driver we can book uh, book the uh, uh, so the we can book the car and uh, the car itself will come to pick up you pick you up and then it will drop you somewhere so that in that case the safety is very high like uh, at night time uh, for people like we don't know uh, whether they, the uh, the driver could be a criminal and uh, we might be in trouble we might be in danger uh, because of the person so if by avoiding so the all these things can be avoided by using and there are there, there are also other negative impacts like uh, people will lose their jobs the the emergence of uber itself uh, like uh, because of uh, Uber and all uh, that type of uh, uh, services, so many people, you know, lost their uh, business because uh, they were uh, they were in uh, taxi, uh, you know, industry, and they because of that they lost. So with the advancement of uh, autonomous cars, still more people will lose their drivers will lose their jobs because of the because there is no need to have a human being to drive the vehicles. That is one of the uh, problems uh, that we are going to face. So then automation development today. So the what is the uh, currently what we are going to do. So from here onwards, we'll be just talking, we'll talk about ROS, robotic operating system. So robot operating system. So robotic robot operating system can be used for implementing simple type of uh, robot system, simple uh, like not not simple like uh, compared to an aut autonomous vehicle it is simple but compared to any other type of robot systems it is much more complex so we can implement uh, different type of systems using this uh, you're using ROS or ROS2 so I'm using ROS2 implement uh, so right now I'm working on ROS and I'm parallelly I'm working on ROS2 and I've already implemented one project in ROS uh, multiple projects in ROS I will see a uh, demo here uh, for raw system, so I, right now I'm working on that. So it can be used for implementing aut autonomous robots, self-driving robots, and uh, uh, so indoor robots or outdoor robots, or it can be used for manipulators, autonomous manipulators. So we can uh, you can see that uh, in uh, assembly lines these days, like if you take car assembly lines, they have robot manipulators that are very accurate, very accurate. Uh, that means they can they can work on pinpoint precision. They can like they are used for screwing or uh, 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 like uh, fixing different things or painting or drawing different things on on the uh, on the body or like like vehicle manufacturing itself. It is used for like so these robots are very precise. They are pre-programmed and they are very precise and they can uh, pinpoint the uh, they can uh, find out the area they need to work on with the pinpoint precision. So that type of systems are like very high costly systems. These are implemented in high uh, like uh, multi billion dollar plants, like uh, multi billion dollar uh, like manufacturing uh, vehicle manufacturing plants. So these robotic systems are very advanced and they're not accessible to most people. So that is the advantage of using ROS. So in ROS, in case of ROS, any uh, person it is ROS is more. Uh, it's an open source system and it has more uh, it has more automation systems and automation uh, capabilities than 
any kind of any other kind of implement uh, like existing uh, open source uh, systems so like people can uh, make that type of uh, like manipulators so the slam is one thing like a driverless uh, uh, like so autonomous robots is one thing and then you can make manipulators by using just simple servo motors and uh, uh, like acrylic or metal setup we can make different type of manipulators we can get the feedback from the servo and we can move the uh, move the manipulator with the pinpoint position by just giving a single uh, like by giving 3d inputs like 3d uh, coordinate input we can just move the robot to an accurate position so we can use it for pick and place uh, purposes like if you have an object and you can use a camera to detect the object and the manipulator will accurately move to that place and pick up the object so we can use a 3d camera or a kinet camera to object for object recognition and localization and then you can use the manipulator and uh, you can fix the manip the manipulator should be fixed somewhere in the frame so the manipul then you can give the uh, use the manipulator as the as origin and you can use uh, get the uh, coordinates 3d coordinates based on the 3d coordinates the manipulator can move accurately accurately to that point and pick up the object so that is one thing that we can you uh, that can be implemented in uh, ROS. So now we'll just see in uh, detail about ROS, robot operating system. Uh, so robot op operating system is an open source robotic middleware suit. So it's a middleware suit. It is called an operating system, but uh, it is not exactly like a conventional operating system, like a Linux, uh, like a Linux or Windows operating system. Although ROS is, an, is not an operating system, but a collection of software frameworks for robot software development. So it is not exactly a operating system, but rather a collection of rather a collection of uh, software frameworks for robot uh, frame uh, software development. So it is used for so robot software development. You can create your own robotic system uh, by by implementing it on Windows or uh, Linux. So mostly people use uh, implements uh, ROS or ROS2 in Linux, like Ubuntu OS because uh, there is more support and development that is happening in windows uh, in you know linux if you install that same in linux that uh, it in windows it will be much more harder to use it and also we can in, uh, install uh, like linux operating systems in single board computers like jets and nano computers or raspberry pi uh, raspberry pi we can easily implement uh, like we can easily install linux os ubuntu os and we can uh, so we can directly uh, make the uh, make the robot without a laptop or a PC. So the collection of software frameworks and it provides services designed for a uh, heterogeneous computer cluster such as a hardware abstraction, uh, such as hardware abstraction, low level device control, implementation of commonly used functionalities, message passing between processes and package management. So these are all the different things uh, that uh, that comes with the ROS uh, that comes with ROS like uh, uh, it provides services designed for a heterogeneous computer cluster uh, computer cluster so it, it is not the hardware uh, uh, the software is not implemented in a single hardware system like in normal case we have we are making a project means we'll implement the whole thing in a if it is in an embedded embedded project you will implement the whole thing in a microcontroller or a single board computer so the whole thing will be implemented in that single hardware and then there will be peripherals uh, used for interfacing other external hardware devices like sensors or actuators uh, and other devices or if you're using making a software uh, system then you know using java or python or uh, uh, any other type of uh, uh, you know uh, language or tool uh, you you will be doing you will be uh, you know, you'll, you'll be making it completely for one platform one environment whether it is a uh, windows or uh, android or linux or whatever it is you will be com completely making it for one environment but with ros it is spread around different so we can implement we can implement ros in simple arduino or uh, simple microcontroller boards or we can uh, then we can have a uh, ros implemented in uh, in single board computers like raspberry pi or jetson boards or we can use MATLAB to uh, use that use MATLAB without implementing without installing anything in in Windows. We can use simply use MATLAB and we can all the ROS and all the ROS and ROS to 
packages are available in matlab so we can use matlab as a one uh, part so in that but in that case you need a windows system to process the data so you need a windows system to process the data and then uh, all the commands are done uh, are sent to the microcontroller for con control so so that means then there will be sensors like lidar sensor will be there uh, so to interface lidar sensor we need a raspberry pi and then uh, there will be ime sensor so ime sensor can be interfaced with the raspberry pi or it can be interfaced with the microcontroller uh, or then there are dc motors so all these hardware are combined to make uh, into a single system and the single system can communicate with the, the different nodes and the different parts of the single system can communicate with each other so that is the that's what we can see here in this definition here Heter heterogeneous computer cluster such as hardware abstraction layer so a hardware abstraction layer low level vehicle control um, and uh, sorry low level device control implementation of uh, commonly used functionalities and uh, message passing between processes so process can be uh, so then package management so what is ROS? Uh, so hardware abstraction and low level device control so in these are like different components of uh, ROS, hardware abstraction and lower level device control. That is a brief uh, one line uh, explanation about what is ROS, hardware abstraction and lower level device control. Created by California based uh, Willow Garage, now maintained by Open Source Robotic Foundation OSF, OSRF. Then ROS equals plumbing tools, capabilities, and ecosystem. So we'll see all these things one by one, plumbing tools, capabilities, ecosystem, everything. So what is hard, uh, then hardware abstraction. So then uh, plumbing. So when you take plumbing, ROS provides publish and subscribe messaging infrastructure. So plumbing means uh, it is a uh, message transfer between each nodes. Uh, so like, for example, there is a, if they, if you have a LiDAR sensor, in my case, I'm using this like particular, uh, you know, LiDAR called RP LiDAR A1. It is a 360 degree uh, 2D LiDAR. So you can you can create the LiDAR sensor as a node. So the not just the sen hardware sensor itself, the uh, the software part, the driver, and uh, the uh, software that is needed to access the scan uh, the scan data. So all that. Uh, that are implemented in a Raspberry Pi. We can implement all that in a Raspberry Pi and uh, connect the LiDAR sensor through USB with the Raspberry Pi. And then we can consider the whole thing, Raspberry Pi plus LiDAR sensor as a node. So that node uh, need to be connected. To, and then I'm using MATLAB for processing. So the processing is done in MATLAB. Uh, the LiDAR, uh, you know, sensor fusion is done in MATLAB. So sensor fusion is a, another important thing when it comes to ROS. Like in case of uh, autonomous cars, we have seen there are like three different inputs like LiDAR, radar and uh, video cameras. So these three real time in inputs need to be combined together to make a single decision. So the, that, that is sensor fusion. So the, it is the same thing is done in, uh, in ROS. In ROS like sensor inputs like LiDAR, laser uh, scans and uh, uh, IMU sensor values and wheel encoder values, all these things are combined uh, using this thing called, uh, you know, using this uh, uh, method called Kalman filtering. So using Kalman filtering, all these sensors are fused, all the sensor data is fused together to get a single output, single output, the velocity, the vector, velocity vector for, for each wheel. So it is a velocity vector because we need to we need to get the direction and speed of the uh, wheels. So then, uh, so plumbing. So in that case, MATLAB is considered a node, and all otherwise inside MATLAB itself there will be multiple nodes for each thing, like a uh, processing, uh, like this Kalman filtering filtering part, and all those can can be all that can be considered as a node and then the RP LiDAR and the uh, sensing the the uh, laser reading system with the Raspberry Pi can be considered as a node and these two nodes need to communicate because the sensor will read the laser data and then it will send the data to MATLAB and the MATLAB will process the data so this messaging is called plumbing so this data transfer is called plumbing and uh, it uses publish and subscribe message model for this purpose so the publish subscribe mm, 
method if you know public subscribe method if you studied like protocols like uh, mqtt if you study internet of things and if you study things like uh, mqtt mqtt means message queue message queue telemetry transport so it is one of the internet protocols uh, so we know about like http uh, uh, like smdp these are like one of the most common like uh, application layer protocols so mqtt is one of the other application layer protocols so it is mostly used in simple systems uh, like uh, uh, embedded IoT system, IoT based system. So MQTT also uses public subscribe model. In that case, uh, a node can send data, publish the data. It is not just sending, simply sending the data. So sending data means we know who we are sending the data to. So we know that uh, there is a receiver. So we have a transmitter and then there is a receiver. So from, from transmitter we'll send the data. So anyway, only the receiver will receive the data. So we are like, uh, for example, if you are sending a message from our mobile phone, we can mention the uh, number of people to which you want to send the uh, message. So we can just mention their mobile numbers at the recipient list, and then we can just send the message. So only those people get the, will get the message because I have the identification marked as the phone number is the identification mark based on that it will easily find the, the recipients and they'll get the message. So that is one-to-one -one communication. So here, this publish, in sub, publish subscribe model, there is no such thing. It could be one-to-one -one communication or it could be one to one person to multiple people, multiple one node to um, multiple node communication. So there is a publish. So publish, like we can say, we can explain publish subscribing with the conventional normal publishing subscribing, uh, like, uh, like if you take a magazine, simple magazine, it uses the same type of a publish subscribe model, right? A magazine, it will, uh, it will. So a weekly, if it is a weekly magazine, we can subscribe to the magazine. We can subscribe to the magazine. But we can subscribe to online, or we can subscribe to uh, like postal uh, issues. So whenever there is a new uh, issue, they will, they will send that to our. Uh, to our address or you or you'll get a copy in your uh, email or something if it is online mm, so on a regular basis on like a weekly basis you will get the uh, copies every every time you will get the copies because it is a publish subscribe model the publisher will send the data uh, send the uh, copies and all the subscribers will get the uh, get that so the same thing is same idea can be uh, so we can explain publish subscribe here using the same idea the publisher is the node like the for example in case of lidar lidar node the lidar node is with the raspberry pi is a publisher and the and matlab that is running in our system is the subscriber so the lidar can just simply publish with the topic so it will publish the data lidar data with the topic and the matlab can access the data or read the data using the same topic so the matlab should should know the common topic so only by knowing the topic we can access the data in a published subscribe mode model so the top, topic is uh, published uh, the data topic is published with the data and the, the whenever the, the subscriber is listening to the receiving data it will first listen for the topic and to make sure that it is the right topic and uh, it will read the data so the LIDAR can just publish the data and any other node, not just MATLAB, any other node can access the, this data if they, if it has the, if the node has the uh, right to, topic, uh, topic. So that is plumbing, just uh, sending data like messages, uh, like it could be velocity, uh, wheel velocity vector, or it could be laser scans, or it could be IMU data. Uh, or it would be uh, camera data so it could be any anything and this whole message transfer or or it could be like simple single uh, single character commands so all this can is done through plumbing and then tools rs provides an extensive set of tools uh, for configuring starting introspecting debugging visualizing logging testing and stopping uh, distributed uh, computing systems so there are like so many different tools are there we'll see some of the tools here uh, when we see the actual example and uh, as we go through the slides we'll see some of the other tools capabilities uh, are always provides a broad collection of libraries that implement useful robot functionality with a focus on mobility manipulation and precision so like uh, one of the things uh, is like the pathfinding robots so pathfinding is a very uh, 
very useful thing in case of uh, self driving robots so for example we know about uh, so you may know about you may have heard the uh, word digital algorithm so digital algorithm is used for shorter is for finding the shortest path between nodes so it is not just used in uh, driving it is mostly used in uh, like networking so in networking the shortest path is found uh, using digital algorithm so, so the same idea can be used for self driving navigation so that is that i'm not saying we are going to use digital algorithm for our robot exactly but it is one of the implementation already existing algorithms that uh, that can be implemented using ros because ros already have so there is one of the advantage of using ros there are like so many libraries and useful packages already implemented already fully developed all you have to do is So like yeah, we'll continue. So um, so different type of packages, and uh, we just need to we just need to call these uh, you know import these packages to our uh, entire project, and then just call the uh, packages to for different functions like pathfinding or localization or the fusion uh, the sensor fusion that I was talking about. All these can be implemented using. So if it takes LAM itself, there is the uh thing called uh there is this package called navigation stack so navigate we can use, easily use navigation stack or we can use hector slam so if you want to implement slam uh we can use one of these things like hector slam or navigation stack to implement slam so i'm using navigation stack package called navigation stack to uh implement the navigation stack to implement the uh slam then uh, ecosystem ROC is supported and imported by a large community and with a strong focus on integration and documentation. So ecosystem means like we can easily like you can learn it yourself. You don't need to go to any classes to learn ROS. If you have some basic knowledge about uh, uh, you know Linux systems and uh, different hardware uh, hardware like DC motors and how to work with them. And you have you have knowledge about different uh, programming languages like C, C++, Python, and other type of uh, XML and different type of uh, uh, tools if you know these things you can easily uh, make your own you can read the documentation ROS documentation and there are different forums are there tutorials are there you can easily implement your own projects using this uh, using ROS or ROS2 then ROS key features hardware abstraction layer implementation of a wide range of so hardware abstraction uh, so hardware abstraction if you take hardware ab abstraction so hardware abstraction just simply means uh, it is. I've been talking about hardware abstraction all this time. Hardware abstraction simply means uh, like we have uh, all these low-level devices. Like for example, we have uh, a microcontroller, and microcontroller uses GPIO to uh, GPIO to control the DC motor. But the overall system doesn't need to know about the minute things. Like in a, in case of a normal microcontroller, if you want to configure GPIO, you have to configure the registers. You have to set the pin as output or input in case of a dc motor it should be output and if you using pwm for speed control then you need to configure the pwm so all these are like very low level uh, uh you know configuration so the overall system doesn't need to uh, worry about all these configuration these small configuration so that is the use of hardware abstraction hardware abstraction uses like simple uh techniques to uh use uh, you know uh Use the hardware as, a, as an abstraction, and then without in-depth knowledge of the hardware, the simple part, simple hardware, uh, it is it can use the it can use the hardware by using simple input commands. So implementation, so that is a hardware abstraction. Me, that that's what means hardware. That is the meaning of hardware abstraction in a, any case. Then uh, implementation of a wide range of commonly used tools and algorithms. Uh, so commonly used, uh, like I said, the kind of uh, algorithms like uh, PRM, uh, like probabilistic roadmap. So probabilistic roadmap is a uh, is an algorithm that is used for pathfinding. Like uh, it is not exactly like digital. It is not like shortest path. It is mostly used in case of uh, by avoiding obstacles and uh, all those things. It is it will just uh, draw a path to 
uh, to make the robot move in that path. So PRM is the one of them, probabilistic roadmap. And uh, then Digistra is one of the other in algorithms. So these things are implement, already implemented in ROS. You just need to call the packages and use them. Message passing between processes, OS independent. So it is OS independent. You can have, you can, you can be running the uh, MATLAB in Windows and uh, LIDAR is, is, uh, is accessed through uh, a Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi is running Linux based OS, Raspbian OS. It is a Linux OS uh, based OS, Debian OS. So these two OSs need to communicate. So that can be done through ROS without any kind of, so it is OS independent standardized package management, a useful set of shell commands and utilities with the tab completion. Then ROS client library, so the different type of uh, client libraries are available in Python, C++, Lisp, and MATLAB. So mostly people use us, uh, C++, MATLAB, and Python for like development, Lisp, and Python for development. In our case, uh, we use uh, C++, mainly C++ for implementation, C++ and Python for implementation. Then uh, experimental client libraries, Java and Lua. Uh, so then sub supported operating system, mostly people will be using uh, Debian uh, based, uh, based Ubuntu uh, uh, systems. And we can also have like uh, implemented in Arch Linux or Fedora, Gen2, Mac OS, OpenSUSE, Windows. But mostly people use uh, Debian based Ubuntu OS for implementation because there is more support packages available there. Then supported OSs, already implemented OS, uh, robot systems, I, these are the robot systems that are already implemented. So already implemented means if you, you can use uh, the package, these are open source robots, you can use the specifications and you can buy the hardware and you can easily make the robot. And because all the packages, all the programs, everything, everything is already implemented. We can, you can make it yourself without even making any programs without even writing any programs you can make it yourself then sensors when it comes to sensors 1t 2d range finders sharp ir range finders uh how are you uh your uh, laser scanners sick lasers microsoft kinect sensors asus xtion all these things are different type of sensors and uh, one uh then Force torque sensors, touch sensors, motion capture, force estimation using IMU and GPS, audio speech recognition, RFID for localization, uh, and uh, sensor act actuator interfaces like dynamic cell, fidget, Arduino, RD, uh, Arbotics, Lego, NXT. So these are like actuator interfacing for different uh, platforms that can be used for actuator interface. Then simulators, so we are uh, in, uh, in, in ROS, we can use simulations, you don't need, you don't, initially if you're starting to learn about ROS, you don't need to first buy all the hardwares and make the robot, you, you can just directly implement your robot system in a simulation. So there are two types of simulation systems uh, available in uh, ROS, uh, 3D simulation or 2D simulation. So this is a stage, is a 2D simulation, uh, is, is a 2D simulator where you can actually write uh, the we can you can create your own uh, autonomous uh, robots and you can test it using without any you can test it without any hardware by using the simulator. Stage simulator is a, a, a simulator for multiple large scale mobile robots, but is mostly used in navigation, autonomous navigation, and all those and model for sensors like laser sonar, actuators, grippers. All these can be used. Modes of uh, simple objects for limited manipulators models for simple objects for limited manipulators no physical models no physical models no uh, physics mod no models at all example friction collision so forth all these are not available in uh, in in case of uh, the simulation open source project so it's an open source project and then simulator like 3d simulator like uh, gazebo Gazebo is a 3D simulator of, of uh, multiple robots in real in realistic environments. The realistic simulation of a rigid body physics dynamic uh, then models for complex robots, actuators, sensors, uh, sensors, activity sensors, cameras, IMUs, support uh, support provided in part by open source robot foundation OSRF. 
chosen as a simulate simulator for Dra uh, DARPA Defense and Advanced Research Project Agency uh, robot challenge open source project. So DARPA is a uh, is like uh, the Defense Research and Development Department of U.S. Defense Research and Development Department. So they use also 3D uh, Gazebo tool to uh, simulate different type of robots. So you can use, you can set, you can go and see this yourself. Uh, we, you can just, uh, you can implement this Gazebo easily in your Windows system itself. You can install a, uh, so even, even if you're doing it in Windows, it is better to use a, use VM like a virtual machine to install a, a Linux system, a Linux Ubuntu uh, OS in your Windows system itself. Then inside that uh, Linux OS, you can implement the implement Gazebo. We can you can install uh, ROS and you can install Gazebo and you can create your own robotic simulation robot simulations. Then after the simulation, you can implement it in real life by buying all the hardware. Using using that, you can implement the real robot. Then. Uh, so then it comes to then in general uh, we can talk about uh, different platforms that we can use. Uh, so in so next uh, we'll just see the uh, demo uh, the the project output that I'm just working on. So right now uh, we can see that and uh, so it's a self navigation robot. It's a slam robot. Uh, it so it is in a, it is still under development. It is a prototype that is uh, still being developed. So I'm working on it, and uh, right now we have implemented a uh, navigation stack in in the in in, in robot. And I'm not um, using any other hardware. I'm just uh, using a single Jetson Nano board. So I can just show you the different components that uh, I'm using here. So mainly, uh, mainly the thing that is implemented here. Uh, the, so the SLAM is fully implemented on uh, this is a Jetson Nano board. So this is a this is a board from in this company Nvidia. So we know about Nvidia. They make GPUs, uh, graphic in case of graphic processing uh, like hardware. They are a leading partner, and uh, it is. From this single board computer called Jetson Nano is from NVIDIA, and there are like different versions of Jetson boards are there, Jetson Tecra, Jetson uh, Nano, and Jetson Nano is one of the basic models. And in Jetson Nano itself, there are two variants: 4GB variant and uh, 2GB variant. I'm using a 4GB variant here for implementation. I'm using uh, the 4GB variant here for in implementing. So this is a single board computer, and it has a uh, we can we can write it has a SD card slot. We can write the OS, uh, write an Ubuntu OS. It, uh, the if you if you download directly from the official website, you can get this OS called Jetpack. So it is an it's also a Linux OS. It's a, also you know Linux OS that is specifically for uh, this. For Jetson and itself. Otherwise, you can just uh, download any kind of ROS based OSs like Ubuntu OSs and uh, install that in Jetson Nano. So, you can just, it is simply just like using a Raspberry Pi. You can, if you have an SD card, you can write it, uh, you know, write the OS to the SD card. So, you should be having like a 32 GB or a 16 GB, minimum 32 or 16 GB SD card. And then afterwards, you can uh, install, implement the ROS in this OS. Then you can access the OS using HDMI cables. You can connect to a monitor. Then you, you, uh, using you, uh, using USB, you can uh, connect a keyboard and mouse. And you can you uh, connect to internet using LAN connector, LAN connector. Otherwise, you can use it. Wi-Fi dongle and you can connect to a Wi-Fi network and it doesn't have any inbuilt inbuilt wireless uh, connectivity connection capabilities like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Uh, so all these has to be added externally. Like if you need to use Wi-Fi, mostly we'll be using Wi-Fi in case of a uh, robotic system because uh, it cannot be, it should not be wired. So it should be, uh, in, so we can use a normal Wi-Fi adapter, uh, Wi-Fi dongle to get the Wi-Fi signal. 
so this is central part so all the most of the robotic pros system is implemented in uh, in this jetson nano so laser scan reading so in this jetson nano there are two nodes uh, autonomous navigation node and rp lidar node so these two nodes are implemented in uh, the jetson nano and uh, so the rp lidar scanning is uh, also uh, rp lidar scan reading and uh, rp lidar scan reading and also the uh, process other processing part like autonomous navigation slam everything is done in the same hardware itself then also i have implemented another uh, face recognition uh, part in this that is separate that you have to run separately so then uh, another so then then we we'll go into next part is the arduino uh, nano boards so arduino so arduino nano board is used to for <coughs> uh, motor control motor speed control so they are uh, they can we can consider arduino nano as a single node and it communicate with uh, communicates with the with the uh, main ros node the main ros node the jetson nano through i2c protocol so uh, jetson nano has inbuilt so jetson nano is a single board computer so it can it is used it, we can in, install uh, ubuntu os and we can use it as a uh, normal uh, computer and also it has uh, these pin these headers here these are all gpio pins uh, with through these pins we can access different type of peripherals like i2c i2c is for two way communication it is for communicating intercommunicating in intercommunication between two devices like it, the device could be in our case the device is uh, arduino nano and uh, jetson nano so jetson nano and arduino nano is communicating through i2c protocol so the jetson nano the there are two type of uh, communication happening here the uh, jetson nano will get the laser data uh, and uh, the wheel encoder data and it uses kalman filtering for fusing the two data the laser data and the and the uh, the wheel encoder data so the wheel encoder data and it it is it will fuse the data together to make a single vector velocity vector so that velocity vector is sent to arduino nano from jetson nano to arduino nano that velocity vector is sent to arduino nano so the arduino nano can control the dc motors well based on the velocity vector the arduino nano can regulate the uh, speed of each dc motor independently so uh, then arduino nano will send the data send a set of data to the jetson nano board so these are the two there are there is two way communication first one is the jetson nano is sending velocity vector values to arduino nano so the arduino can control the dc motors and then arduino is sending back the uh, the wheel data so this is the dc motor that we are using here uh, so this is the dc motor that i am using here so this is a uh, 60 rpm 60 rpm 12 volt uh, dc uh, encoder dc motor so encoder dc motor it's a quadrature it has a quadrature hall based encoder sensor in inbuilt in it so here behind you can see this is not like a normal dc motor setup in normal dc motor there will be only two uh, terminals two leads will be there to which you can connect uh, power power uh, cables but here you can see there is another setup here there is a drum here a round drum so th that is the drum will rotate based on the shaft inside uh, based on the shaft inside the drum uh, which each with each shaft rotation the drum will rotate one time and then there are two uh, hall sensors are there hall magnetic uh, like leads are there so these are both so this is a magnetic system and this is a magnetic lead uh, tip so there are two tips are there so these this is called that's why it's called a quadrature encoder so we have uh, these two tips two uh, points are uh, points are connected with the 90 degree phase difference so if you take the uh, the dc motor image so if you take the dc motor image it will you can see the tip here and these are the, there are two tips there so each they have 90 degree phase difference so the, uh, the each encoder is uh, named a and b so a is the first one b is the second one so if the 
if if the first first uh, tick is registered and the second one is registered afterwards that means the motor is rotating clockwise direction then you can use the this information to count the uh, rpm rpm of the motor the rpm can be count using the hall sensor here and also the direction of rotation clockwise or anti clockwise can be also recognized using the hall sensor here so this is this data is sent to uh, the microcontroller this data is sent to the So this data is sent to uh, Arduino Nano, and then Arduino Nano sends this data to Jetson Nano for its uh, like. Uh, so it uses as a feedback. So Jetson Nano will send velocity values, and then Jetson Nano need to make sure that uh, that the robot is moving in right direction and it is moving with the you know right velocity. So to to make sure it uh, the Arduino Nano will send the feedback. Send the feedback means the current velocity value and the direction of wheel rotation. Everything is sent to the uh, Jetson Nano board, and the, uh, you know, based on based on that, Jetson Nano board will send the next. Uh, based on that information, and also based on uh, laser scan, the Jetson Nano will send the next velocity vector value. So that is the purpose of Arduino Nano uh, here, and this is the whole robot setup. This is a prototype. Uh, so this is a body here, and we have two wheel. Uh, it's a two wheel robot in middle we don't have any steering setup it's just a caster wheel uh, freely moving caster wheel then uh, we can see the light lidar sensor is here and all the other hardware is inside the uh, case uh, boxing inside the casing here and then face recognition camera is here and then you can see here 12 volt rechargeable battery lithium ion battery here so then there is uh, as a next level development we need to add uh, IMA sensor right now I have been added IMA sensor so the system is not fully accurate accurately moving there are some faults because I have been added IMA sensor so by adding IMA sensor so IMA sensors are used for uh, orientation like uh, they are used in uh, so IMA sensors uh, like there are like number of IMA sensors are there like gyroscope axonometer meters these are all this all comes under IMA sensors so gyroscope is for tilt measuring and acceleration is uh, accelerometer is used for measuring acceleration in a particular direction so it is for to see if the object is in level or uh, the direction changing all these can be easily implemented easily uh, detected using uh, using an ima sensor so in next level uh, right now i am just combining the uh, wheel encoder data that we will get from the dc motor wheel encoder data so there are two data in wheel encoders the rpm speed of rotation and also uh, the direction of rotation clockwise or anti clockwise so these two data and then i'm combining that with the laser scans the mapping area uh, the map current map laser scan so these two data is come uh, diffused together to make a single data stream uh, so then in next level we can add i'm going to add ima sensor and fuse that ima da data together with these two data so the the navigation and localization will be much more accurate right now the direction is uh, the the direction detection speed direction everything is totally uh, dependent on the wheel encoders and the wheel encoders can be faulty because uh, depending on the terrain that we use the uh, like if it is a very uh, slippery uh, like a tiles uh, like in if you use it in an indoor area then the the whole thing the flooring can be tiles slippery tiles or it could be like there could be like a, uh, you know different type of uh, obstacles and uh, like that are not detected with the laser so this will can make the robot uh, the wheel rotate till the robot is not moving but the wheel is rotating could be like slits in between the tiles and based on because of that the, the caster wheel could be stuck so for a number of reasons the whole navigation localization can uh, can become much less accurate because we are just using wheel encoder data by just adding IMA data we can make it by using wheel encoder by analyzing wheel encoder data and IMA data we can accurately pinpoint the direction of movement and we can yeah, accurately localize the robot. So <clears throat> next, I'll just show you the uh, the implementation. 
so first uh, we'll just see, see the screen uh, screen share here so this is this is output here actually the final output so i'm implementing this use in uh, in jetson nano so i'm using this uh, linux os ubuntu os to implement that so i'm running so on the left side you can see this on the uh, left side of the video you can see uh, it's a terminal and i'm just opening the program the, uh, the i'm just opening the pro uh, you know running the program in the inside the terminal so so here i'm just here you can see this is called this tool is called rvis uh, so this tool is called rvis so i can just show you the in the workspace So I can just show you the workspace here. Uh, so workspace contains a certain number of files. Uh, so like, uh, uh, for example, 